his hands. Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations trembled at his voice. All creation rises to rejoice. Who has given counsel to the Lord? Who can question any of his words? Who can teach the one who knows all things? Who can fathom all his wondrous deeds? Behold our God, seated on His throne, come let us adore Him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. Who has felt the nails upon His hands? Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Emil. Ako po si Aya. Ako po si Anton. At ako po si Miguel. Kami po ay nagagalak na makasama kayo ngayong umaga sa ating online worship service. Let us start by reading in Psalm 13, 1-6. Let us read. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. In verses 1 to 2, Notice David said how long for times. Hanggang kailan? Gaano katagal God? That's a statement of him asking God for help in times of trouble. To us, are we also asking God, how long is this pandemic? But David is sure about what he said in verses 5 to 6. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. By this, we know our salvation is in God alone. Hindi man natin alam kung hanggang kailan itong sitwasyon natin. Like David, we are secure in God's unfailing love. And this will sustain us. So for our lineup today, in our communion, our brother Christian Gonzalez of ICOC Quezon City will share his heart through the scripture in remembering our Lord Jesus on the cross. 
And in the area of giving, our brother Daryl Villa from ICO Subacolod will inspire us to give with a grateful heart. To inspire us in our main message, Tito Natsunidia of ICO Simutin Lupa will deliver this to us. In giving its response, Tito Richard de Monteverde of ICOC General Santos will set us in our practical discussion later. With that, we want to welcome everyone, family and friends, brothers and sisters, in our online worship of the International Churches of Christ Philippines. Let us pray. God our Father in heaven, we are so thankful because of your unfailing love. Samahan niyo po kami ngayon sa aming pong worship service. Tulungan niyo po kami na makita namin ang aming pong uh, pag sa inyo sa aming buhay ngayon. Bless our online worship service. Maraming salamat po. Ipong dalangin namin sa pangalan ng Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Amen. Standing on your power and your glory. Standing on Trembling and fear, stand in all your sovereign and your holy Lord, O oh God. We stand in all your deeds, your name, your works of creation, your love, your law, your plan of salvation. situation in your life that could shock you or stun you? O yung mga sitwasyon o pagkakataon sa inyong buhay na maaaring kumulat o kumulandang sa inyo? Para po sa akin, last minute changes or last minute updates could shock me or stun me. Yung tipong planchadong planchado na yung plano nyo and then all of a sudden may last minute updates and last minute changes. Uh, share ko lang po, two weeks ago ako po ay kinasal sa aking napakangandang asawa na si Jassy and it's one of the best things na nangyari sa akin during this pandemic. But before that big day, we had to face a lot of last minute updates and changes. Originally po, we are allowed to have 20 guests sa aming wedding at uh, okay, okay lang po yun sa amin, tanggap po namin yun kasi nga delikado po yung sitwasyon because of COVID. And then suddenly, uh, from 20 guests, pwede na raw po yung 50 kasi medyo gumanda raw po yung sitwasyon. And uh, when when we heard that news, talagang na-encourage ko kami kasi nga we're now able to uh, invite our families and friends and relatives from the province. In fact, my uh, parents from Oriental Mindoro, they were so excited, they rented a van para maging service from Mindoro to Manila. And I also have some relatives from Cebu na nag-book na ng ticket para lang maka-attend o para lang makapag-witness sa aming kasal dito sa Manila. Kaya lang po, week before our wedding, may bago naman pong update yung government. GCQ na raw po, and from 50 guests, 10 guests na lang daw po yung pwede kumatayin sa mga wedding ceremonies. We were so discouraged na rinig po namin yung news na yun kasi nga, planchadong-planchadong yung plano namin sa aming kasal. 
We were also discouraged because we had to trim our 50 guests to 10. And uh, because of that update, Ngapo, because of that updates, uh, my parents from Oriental Mindoro decided na huwag na pong maten ng kasal namin. Hindi po doon natatapos yung aming uh, challenges because uh, during our wedding day mismo, we found out that I had a physical contact with someone na nag-positive sa COVID. Ibig pong sabihin, during our wedding day mismo, I was considered as a PUM or person under monitoring. Sabi po sa akin, during our wedding day, na yung kasal po namin ay pwedeng ma-postpone or ma-reschedule, not unless makapagpacheck po ako sa hospital. When I heard that news, grabe, na-shock po talaga ako, na-stand po talaga ako kasi nga, kasal ko na in 3 hours, hindi ko pa alam po anong gagawin ko. Buti na lang, awesome po yung aking groomsmen at saka yung aking best man, so they uh, encouraged me to go to a clinic to be tested. Uh, to make the long story short po, pumunta po ng clinic and there I experienced yung pinakaayaw ko pong swab test and after waiting for the result, I was tested negative of COVID. So tuloy po yung kasal namin. Why am I sharing this to all of us right now? There are really situations in our life that could shock us or stun us. Situations of work, situations of family, or sa mga relationships natin that would uh, make us pause for a break to assess and process the situation. Si Jesus po, uh, in the book of Matthew, also had an experience where he was not shocked or stunned but he had to pause for a break to process the situation that he was in. And let's see po what happened. Let's open the Bibles to Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. Matthew 14, verses 13 to 14. Context lang po uh, ng scripture na babasahin natin. Ito po yung time na pinugutan po ng ulo si John the Baptist. In verse 13, it says there, When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Of course, Jesus had to do that. I mean, namatay po si John the Baptist, yung nagbaptize sa kanya. So he has all the rights to uh, mourn privately, to grieve privately. And I'm sure kung tayo po yung nasa position ni Jesus, we would also do the same thing. Mapag-isa para mag-mourn. Let's keep on reading sa verse 13. Ang sabi po dun, Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. So si Jesus po punto po siya sa isang private na place para mag-mourn, para mag-grieve. Kaya lang po, the crowds followed him. Nakakalungkot po, di ba, na parang gustong-gustong niyo mag-me time, gustong-gustong niyo mag-process alone, pero sinusunod po kayo ng mga tao na may mga pangangailangan sa inyo. Nakakalungkot po yun. Parang sarap sabihin na pwedeng, pwedeng gumalik na lang kay bukas kasi kailangan-kailangan ko talaga magkaroon ng me time right now. But let's keep on reading in verse 14. And it says there, When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, He had compassion on them, and healed their sick. Instead of Jesus uh, telling the crowds to go away because uh, he needs a processing time first, when he saw the crowds, he saw their needs, he saw their problems, and he served them by healing their sick. Instead of Jesus prioritizing or focusing first on what he is feeling during that time, he put it aside and focused on the needs of the crowds na sumusunod sa kanya. You see, mga kapatid, uh, from the scriptures that we have just read, ang natutunong ko po dito is that our uh, faith and our service to God should come as our first priority and our uh, emotions and feelings second priority. Jesus exemplified it not only sa scripture na binasa natin, but even during the time when He was about to die on the cross. Remember, He prayed for the cup to be taken away from Him, but not according to His will, but according to His Father's will. Jesus, instead of focusing on what he is feeling or his emotions, he focused on the needs of others. As we take the communion today, let us always be reminded, let us always remember that Jesus Christ could have always chosen himself. Jesus Christ could have always uh, prioritized or uh, uh, gave importance to what he is feeling or sa kanyang naramdaman. But because of His great love for all of us, He is always willing to put it aside and focus on our needs. As we take the bread and the wine today, let us be grateful for this kind of love, for this amazing love that God has for all of us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray for our communion. 
Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat sa pagkakataon na mapaalalahan na naman ang mga kung gaan po kalalim, kalaki, at katindi ni pagmamahal sa aming Panginoon. Maraming salamat po for this time that uh, could be able to be uh, reminded of uh, how great your love is for all of us. I pray that as we take the bread and the, uh, the, bread and the wine, we could be able to appreciate your love for all of us, Father. Maraming salamat po sa sacrifice na ginawa ni Jesus na dapat kami po inakaranas noon. But uh, because of your great love for all of us, we are here right now enjoying these privileges of your amazing love for all of us, Father. Salamat po, and I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Mayong aga sa inyo tanan. In our benevolence or giving message today, I will share Luke chapter 3 verses 7 to 11. This is a chapter where the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 to 5 was fulfilled concerning John the Baptist and of course Jesus. Opo, we are going to reflect on one area kung saan si John ay kanyang inihanda ang ministry ni Jesus. Let's read Luke chapter 3, starting in verse 7 to 11. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Produce fruit in keeping with the repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Ito yung time na si John ay naglibot sa buong teritoryo ng Jordan River para mag-preach ng pagsisisi, pagtalikod sa kasalanan, at magpapaptize. At doon maraming taong lumabas at pumunta kay John para magpapaptize. Pero ang sabi ni John, 
patunayan nyo muna na nagsisisi talaga kayo. Then the crowd asked him, ano ang dapat namin gawin? Then sumagot si John, kung may dalawa kang damit, ibigay mo ang isa dun sa wala. Kung may pagkain ka, ishare mo. Again, ulitin mo sinabi ni John, sabi niya, kung may dalawa kang damit, ibigay mo yung isa dun sa wala. Kung may pagkain ka, ishare mo. Ito yung gusto kong i-emphasize bakit sa dinami-daming challenges na sinabi ni John sa mga sumusunod na verses sa chapter na to. Nandun yung repentance sa corruption, sa extortion. Bakit nauna niyang challenge sa mga tao ang pagsishare, ang pagbibigay? This is my take sa pinakaunang challenge ni John as a disciple. Kung makaya mong mag-repent sa korupsyon, sa extortion, o sa kahit anong sinful nature na meron ka, ngunit hindi mo makaya mag-share at magbigay sa nangangailangan, abay, may problema tayo sa repentance. Hindi yan ang heart ng isang disciple, lalong-lalo na na hindi yan ang heart ni Jesus. The gospel requires mercy and not sacrifice. And the design of it is to engage us to do all the good we can, especially giving and sharing. Food and clothing are the two basic supports of life, and it's even more relevant during this time of pandemic. This is the reason why we have this benevolence, because our Master in Heaven is commanding us to do so. Let's make this as our daily repentance as disciples in case makalimutan po natin ang kahalagahan ng pagsishare at pagbibigay. Truly, there is joy in repentance. And there is joy when we give and share. Ika nga ni Jesus, lubos na pinagpapala ang nagbibigay. Tayo po ay manalangin. Heavenly Father, thank you for this reminder. May we always see your heart every time we give and share to the church and to the people around us. God, may you bless our giving. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning! My name is Nat Suniga. It's an honor and I'm very excited na makasama kayo ngayong umaga. Ganun din po para sa ating mga kaibigan, mga family members who are joining us. Thank you so much. It's always encouraging kapag marami ang nag-worship kay God. May git isang taon na tayo nagsasama-sama online. And for the past uh, uh, for the past year, we've learned amazing lessons that strengthened us, convicted us, spurred us to be stronger in our faith. Marami sa atin natuto tayo bigla sa technology. Yung iba naman nag adjust pa rin. It's okay. What's important is that we're worshiping together uh, to glorify and to honor God. This morning, I have a question for you. Naaalala mo ba nung una kang natuto sa isang bagay na magaling ka na ngayon? What do I mean? What I mean is uh, a talent or a skill like singing, writing, dancing, drawing, uh, playing instruments, or maybe even carpentry. Diba? It took sacrifices. It took perseverance. Diba? Uh, yung excitement na may bago kang natutunan or na-discover. And also, yung commitment na kailangan para gumaling ka dun sa skill or talent na yun. You know, for me, it's driving. I really love to drive. Uh, ang nagturo sa akin, um, isang disciple, e eh, ginawa niya, dinala niya ako sa isang lugar dito sa Muntinlupa na masikip, maraming tao, at maraming sasakyan. <laughs> Perfect combination, di ba? Natuto ako mag-brake, uh, umabanti ng maayos, tumingin sa kaliwa, sa kanan. You know, I had to be careful kasi maraming tumatawid. O kaya biglang may nagkakat na mga sasakyan. I can honestly say, after 14 years, I'm much better at driving than when I started. Bakit natin ito pinag-uusapan? I believe worship is something that we need to keep on growing. If we are not careful, we can neglect worship, gaya ng ibang mga bagay na ginagawa natin sa buhay natin. We may know what to do and what to expect. But without the right heart and attitude for worship, worship can become a dull weekly activity. It can also become a numbing routine that feels forced and unnatural. Diba? Parang napipilitan at hindi natural. What's worse is we can lose the power that comes from real and life-changing worship. Today, I want you to be in awe of God that leads you to worship. I want to encourage you to persevere in worship, even during tough times. And lastly, I want to give you a vision that you can hold on to as a disciple of Jesus, no matter what happens. Para sa ay mga friends and family members, we encourage you to open up your hearts and your minds to God because He deserves our worship. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to learn from your words. Thank you that we can worship you, God, that we can learn to worship as we appreciate who you are, um, no matter what we're going through, and that we can have a vision that we can hold on to uh, as we move forward in our lives. We love you. May you bless this message. May your words be preached. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Diba, sinabi ko kanina, I love to drive. Today, I will bring you to three people. We will learn from their examples that will inspire us para mag-worship kay God. Ang una nating pupuntahan ay si Moses sa Exodus chapter 33 verse 18 hanggang 34 verse 1 to 9. Moses came to a point in his life that he was so stressed, he was so burdened in leading his people. He led the Israelites out of Egypt and throughout their journey, he experienced complaints, anger, sin, tapos paulit-ulit mga kapatid. Even nung nasa Mount Sinai sila, they even messed up big time. So God was so angry with them that He said to Moses, Moses, leave me alone. I will destroy these people, but I will make you into a great nation. So Moses prayed to God to relent and instead ask Him, God, please be with us. You know, kahit na matigas ang ulo at stiff neck itong mga taong to. So, let's pick up the story 
sa Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. Sabi rito, Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Exodus 34 verse 1, Sabrito, The Lord said to Moses, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first one, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablet which you broke. Be ready in the morning and then come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain, not even the flocks and herds may, gaze, may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first one and went up Mount Sinai early in the morning as the Lord had commanded him. And he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sins of their parents to the third and fourth generation. Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. Point number one, awe in worship. Wow, what an amazing sight. Imagine Seeing God's hands in front of your face. That's the best face palm ever. Diba? To see God's hands in front of you. But you know, when God passed by, nilagay ni God yung kamay niya sa ni Moses, and then he turned around. If the hand was amazing, how about seeing the back of God? I mean, it would be unbelievable. Ano kaya makikita natin kapag nakita natin ang kamay or likod ni God? Will we see the past, the present, or the future? I don't know. But like I've said, it would have been amazing to be there. But you know what, mga kapatid? What's interesting is that God did not introduce His greatness by saying, I created the heavens and the earth. You know, I can destroy mountains and dry up the seas. God can do it. But you know what's special? He introduced His character and his being. Ano yung mga ginamit niya mga terms? He is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. He maintains love, forgives wickedness and rebellion, and he is just, not leaving the guilty unpunished. With all these things, how did Moses respond? He bowed down to the ground at once and worship. Mga kapatid, namamangha pa ba tayo sa pagsamba sa Diyos? Kapag umaawi tayo sa worship services, I know we're watching the screen, it's it's not like katulad kapag live service, pero do we sing with our hearts flowing with gratitude, joy, and awe? Nagsasamba, nagsumasamba pa ba tayo thinking yung character and being ni God na sinasamba natin? Alam ko marami tayong hamon na hinaharap ngayong pandemya na to. And minsan, hindi sinasadya nagiging legalistic tayo sa pag worship We think si God parang paparusahan tayo kapag mali yung ginagawa natin, ibibless tayo kapag tama yung ginagawa natin. I mean, yeah, God this, does these things. But you know what? He's more than that. He is personal. He is not an idol who is blind, deaf, and mute. He will respond with compassion. He is gracious even when we are not. He is patient with us, slow to anger. Why are we here? Because God is loving. 
You know, His love is unheard of among the gods in this world. There is no one like the Lord we worship. Why? Because He became man and He saved us. Please remember, brothers and sisters, not everyone sees what you see. Not everyone experiences worship like you do. So many people around us are hurting, lonely, and in need of love. We have the opportunity to bring people to a place of worship. A place where they will just be in awe and in peace, filled with joy and gratitude. Panahon na ulit mga kapatid, para ibalik ang pagkamangha natin sa pagsamba sa Diyos. We have a lot of places to go to, so let's move on. Pangalawang pupuntahan natin si Habakkuk the prophet. You know, Habakkuk wrestled with God. Nakita niya na sa panahon niya, ang daming injustices, ang daming wickedness, and you know, he asked God questions that mattered in his life. He, he said, God, how long must I call for you and you won't answer? Why is injustice and wrongdoing being tolerated? God answered him that soon he will send the nation to punish these wicked people. I mean, he was complaining of injustice and then suddenly God would say, I will send a nation who will destroy them. Uh, excuse me, God, what is that? So, tinanong niya ulit si God, sabi niya, why will you do this? Diba? You're, you're an awesome God, you're an amazing God, why will you do this? To this, God replied, they too will be destroyed and punished. When he understood that God is in control, he accepted this plan and worship. Let's pick up the story in Habakkuk chapter 3. We'll start in verse 16. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Point number two, strength to worship. Can you relate to Habakkuk, mga kapatid? Are you asking God questions lately? The truth is, our journey is not always pleasant. We will pass by spiritual deserts or wilderness where we can feel lonely, anxious, discouraged. Like Habakkuk, we may even ask questions. You know, the pandemic na to certainly made us ask God questions. God, how long? God, why? You know, when will this stop? What's encouraging is that Habakkuk was open to God. Since God is personal, He can take your questions. He can address your doubts, your fears, and even your anxious thoughts. He may not answer with a verbal response, but he will move in ways that will surprise you and encourage you. The Bible in itself, words na ni God yon to inspire you and encourage you. He may send another Christian, a brother, a sister, to inspire you and, and to lift your spirit up. We may be in a desert at times, but God is in the driver's seat. We can trust Him. He, know, he knows what He's doing. He knows where to go. And he will bring us to the place where he wants us to be. Kapatid, are you in a spiritual desert right now? My encouragement to you is to hold on. Kapit lang tayo mga kapatid if we feel like we are in a desert right now. Malalampasan din natin to, Gaya ng maraming mga challenges na dinaanan natin sa buhay natin. Stay focused and let God lead you. Recall the goodness of God and trust in Him. Stay connected with brothers and sisters na kasama natin sa spiritual journey. 
we can strengthen and encourage one another. Lastly, let's keep worshiping, mga kapatid. It will be an awesome time. Our final stop today is with John, the Apostle of Jesus. Let's read Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Point number three, vision of worship. If the idea of seeing God's palm and God's back was inspiring, wait till you see God face to face. It will blow your mind away. John and the original recipient saw a vision in the scriptures that inspired them to hold on to worship. You know, alam nyo mga kapatid, itong mga to, they, they, you know, they, they face dangerous persecutions. You know, unimaginable struggles. But this vision helped them and kept them faithful. The vision of God dwelling among men is an inspiring vision. Ito rin yung vision na gusto ni God na panghawakan natin as we move forward in our spiritual journey. Sabi nga doon, He will renew all things and dwell among us. If you are doing well spiritually, amen. This should strengthen you even more. This should inspire you to keep loving God. It should encourage you to keep serving, to keep loving, to keep reaching out to people. Na hindi ka maging contento sa isang dull and uninspiring worship for you to keep growing in this important area in your spiritual life. Why? Because this vision is something that we will do for all eternity. God wants us to see His face. God wants us to be free from all suffering. God wants to wipe the tears from our eyes. God wants us to be with Him. With this vision, I'd like to ask you again, how is your worship? It's time to renew our hearts, mga kapatid. It's time to repent and prepare ourselves as we worship. It's time to go the extra mile. When we gather, let's sing with all our hearts as we praise God. Ipakita natin yung mga sarili natin when we are in a video call. Let's drop everything so that we can focus on God's words, on each other, and in growing sa pagsamba. Let's listen intently to the word that brings life and peace to us. And also, let's practice them. Para sa mga kaibigan namin at kapamilya na kasama namin, samahan nyo kami. The more you study the Bible, the more you know, the, the, the more you know about God, the more you will fall in love and worship. We are still learning, katulad nyo. It's awesome if we can learn together and keep on worshiping God with you. Now, if lately you have not been doing spiritually well, now is the time to repent. Now is the time to get stronger. Now is the time to connect with your brothers and sisters and get the help that you need. Worshiping with your spiritual family is faith building. God dwelling with us, mga kapatid, wow, it's a vision that we need to hold on to. Whether you are young, you are matured in the faith, whether you are leading and serving, you know, the vision should lead you to worship. Huwag na tayong tumigil, magpatuloy tayo. Bakit? Like I've said, 
Worship is something we will do for all eternity. As we close out, today we visited Moses, Habakkuk, and John. Nakita natin kung paano naging in awe si Moses nung nakita niya si God. Si Habakkuk, he asked questions to address his concerns, his struggles. And then when we visited John, we saw a vision that should inspire us to keep worshiping God dwelling with us forever. It's amazing. Mga kapatid, maraming maraming salamat sa pakikinig and may God bless your desire to grow stronger in worship. To God be the glory. Wow! What a spiritual ride! Max, thank you for preaching the message today. Thank you for giving us a ride and visiting the lives of Moses, Habakkuk, and John. You shared with us that they were individually struggling and overwhelmed, yet they find themselves worshiping God and eventually find guidance, strength, and comfort. Amazing. The lesson this morning helped us see that our worship towards God is very crucial in our spiritual journey. Like for me personally, there were times when my life's concerns overwhelmed me. My aging parents with their health challenges, my family's safety and future, seeing the many needs of the church. There were times and many times I just don't know what to do. But my personal worship with God helped me. Brothers and sisters, we are all individually in our spiritual journey. Whatever circumstances or situations we may be in, our worship towards God will be our encouragement, our guide, and our blessings. For our group discussion this morning, there are two questions. In what way will your worship for God become natural like that of Moses, Habakkuk, and John? Number two, do you find yourself worshiping God unnatural and forced? What kind of help do you need? Brothers and sisters and our friends, thank you for being with us this morning. Have a great Sunday. Let's all go back to God and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can worship you today. It is a privilege that we don't deserve, yet you gave it to us. Father, as we worship you, help us know you. Help us connect with you. Help us be transformed in a way that you want us to be just like your son, Jesus. I pray that in our daily worship, we may find comfort, strength, and guidance. We love you. And in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. For our announcements, we would like to invite everyone to visit and check out our online platforms, ICOC Philippines website, ICOC Philippines Facebook page and YouTube channel, and to know more about our church worldwide, you can visit Disciples Today website and Kidogo YouTube channel. For information on latest updates, lessons, and schedules, please like, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell so we can notify you. Let us do our part in spreading God's word and love by sharing this video. Jehovah, from the heavens praise His name. Praise Jehovah in the highest. All His angels praise proclaim. All His hosts together praise Him. Sun and moon and stars on high. Praise Him, O ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky. And His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted, far above the earth and sky. Let them praise His gift, Jehovah, they were made at His command, and forever He is.
established, His decree shall ever stand. From the earth, O oh, praise Jehovah, all ye floods, ye dragons all. Fire and hail and snow and vapors, stormy winds that hear Him call. Let a prayer and praises give Jehovah, for His name alone is high. In His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted. And his Trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains high, creeping things and beasts and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all ye people, princes, great earth, judges all. Praise his name, young men and maidens, aged men and children small. Let a prayer and praises give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. In his glory, his glory is exalted, and his glory, his glory is exalted, and his glory, his glory is exalted, far above the earth and sky. Let a prayer and praises give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his name 